The podcast is back. It has been a week. Last week, I got absolutely knocked out by whatever the hell bug is going around. It wasn't COVID. Felt fine, got up in the morning, went downstairs, and boom, asleep for 24 hours. Not good. Still got a sniffle, still got a snow, a snow throat, a sore throat. So bear with us. It might not be the best sounding podcast you've ever heard. You might have a lot of block nose Jordy accent, but there we go. This is Demand Better Marketing, the podcast. This is episode three. Next week, we will be on the road in Texas. So we're going to have to figure out a solution for that. I think it's going to be a, a podcast from a phone type of arrangement. We're not taking this massive setup naturally. Um, today, we're talking about seven tools that will change your marketing approach. That's not right. That's not the title I've got wrote on this screen in front of us. I'm going to look. Seven tools that will change your approach to marketing. Words were flipped around. It doesn't matter. Tools, marketing, software, let's get into it. Obviously, it's been a little while, so we did one, since we did one of these, it might be a little bit ropey. And this is the first episode that is not live. This is past me talking to you. I'm talking to the future audience, which is always weird and freaky. But let's roll with it. Episodes one and two of the Demand Marketing Podcast are available on Stitcher. I don't even know if Stitcher still a thing. Spotify, iTunes, all of the places that you would regularly get podcasts from. Remember to subscribe. Because it's not live, I can't invite you to leave questions or comments below. But if you do leave comments or questions or email us with feedback, we'll answer them on the next episode for sure. And on this episode, we are talking about simple things, top-level stuff that we can maybe break down in further episodes. And, you know, it's... It's an interesting one. Marketing tools really is kind of, people think marketing tools and dive straight into software, but we're not, we're not trying to do that today. We're going to talk a little bit about software. People think of things like HubSpot, Marketo, CRMs, SEO software, lead capture software, all that stuff. But there's about a million posts, a million podcasts and 7 million videos about what they are, how they can help you. So we're going we're gonna to touch on them a little bit, but for the most part, this episode is not about software. We are going to cover some different, bigger, some more strategic tools. That said, though, we are going to kick off with a piece of software. Why the hell not? Let's get out there. Marketing tool number one, one and a half, however you want to look at this, is AREFs slash SEMrush, RF slash SEMrush. Who cares? One thing is for sure, all of these SEO software tools need to sort out how the hell you pronounce the brand names. The two leading examples in the market are AREFs and SEMrush. They don't know how to say it. We don't know how to say it. Is it RFs? Is it AHREFs? Is it SEMrush? Is it SEMrush? The brand name, that side of linguistics needs sort the hell out. AREFs is my go-to marketing tool. It is one of my personal favorites. We use it day in, day out here at Canny. It's a top tool for marketers. What it lets you do is it if, for example, you want to research Fowl Raven bags, you can put the website into AREFs and you can have a look. You can see the pay-per-click ads they're running. You can see the types of content they're creating, what's working and what's not. You can see all of the keywords they're ranking for. And then you can map them against a different brand, Nike, Adidas, see what they're ranking for. If you, I mean, it's hard to think of examples on the spot, but if you run a a sneaker, I, I hate the word, I can't believe I've just used such an American word on our podcast. If you run a trainer company, you're selling shoes, and you want to know what Nike and Adidas are getting the most value from, AREFs is brilliant for that. You can go in, you can find, okay, 10,000 people per month are looking for black running trainer. And then you can see what content they have that's ranking for that. And you can not duplicate the content, but you can create other different types of content drill down and find out what's working, what's getting the links. Basically, AREFs, SEMrush, they do pretty much the same thing. I'm sure both company founders will love being compared like that, but I, I am sorry. Drop us a mail, we'll correct ourselves. But AREFs and SEMrush do roughly the same thing. Pricing's about £180 a month we pay at AREFs. They're really great at deep diving into SEO, into content marketing, and basically utilizing all of the data that's out there on the web to create your own marketing plans, your own marketing strategies, and your own content marketing ideas. Tool number two is not a piece of software. Tool number two was introduced to me by the Goldman Sachs program. 
It is a framework called the See, Think, Do, Care framework. It's the first non-software tool on this list. Basically, marketing funnels and marketing pipelines are a bit of a mess. They just are, like, there's no getting away from it. The thought that somebody enters your company's pipeline or funnel and just gradually, linearly, pr like, presses down that journey in this day and age isn't right at all. You land on a website, you follow them on Instagram, you follow them on social media, you, you subscribe to their news, you might get a podcast, you might watch a video. The whole, that linearity is gone. People don't progress nicely. The ping here, there, everywhere. Imagine you got a pen and just scribble. That's more what the customer buying journey looks like these days. That is just how it is. The see, think, do care framework kind of accounts for that. It's a great framework for building content ideas. So things like the, the whole idea is where will people see your brand? So if you all see and then start thinking about, so let's think about an IT company or an internet service provider. You're working away on your computer and all of a sudden you see that your internet is down. That's not great. It comes back online, it's fine. Later, it happens again. You're starting to see problems with your internet. So that's one thing. Then you start thinking to yourself, okay, what, what should we do about this? Like the internet is intermittent. It's not fast enough. The download speeds are rubbish. What sort of things could we do about this? You start looking, you start thinking about your options. Could we buy a faster router? Could we hire a, a different company to manage the internet for us? Could we do all of these different things? You're starting to think about the problem. And then you start taking action. It's like, okay, what we've decided to do is put out a proposal find five internet companies that can service our office space. And then that's action, that's the do step. So you're taking action there. And then further than that, you get the proposals back. They look good. And then you decide on one to work with. That's do, that's you in action. And then care, the internet doesn't go down again. You're liking the company, the service they provide is great. This is how you can kind of like see, see, think, do, care working in a, in a piece of like marketing. So it's all about a journey, but it kind of accounts for different like buying decisions and buying points. So the way I like to use this framework is like in the C section, we might create content that are quick hints and tips, ways you can fix your internet, news about internet news, ideas and updates. It's like little kind of almost like buzzfeedy snapshot bits of information that you could serve up through social media, through your blog, through your news, that are quick hints and tips. In think phase, people are maybe looking for ideas on pricing, they're looking for in-depth thought articles, reasons that this might be happening and detailed fixes, how they might get around to fixing that themselves before contracting an agency to do it for them. In do, you might wanna be thinking about sharing things like testimonials, case studies, things that like prove you are a good company, reputable, able to do the job. And then in care, once you've got that client over the line, you might want to share tips on making ongoing difference to the internet, things they can do with the internet that they maybe hadn't thought of before. Think about things like referral bonuses and client nights. All of these are like marketing little tactics and strategies that you can piece together around this framework to kind of help you map the customer journey even though it's not as linear as it was once. Like it, it could take a bit of getting used to and there's some crossover between the sections, but it's really a thinking exercise and trying to change your thinking around the content and the sort of things you're putting out there to market your business. I feel like I do that all the time. I used to do that kind of wrap up tone of voice on, on our old videos and I've started doing it in the podcast now. Let's roll on. Tool number three. Zapier, another piece of software, but not really is. It's a tool that connects software. It lets you automate anything, anywhere. We use Zapier a lot within Canny. We connect all of our favorite software together. We've got Slack talking to Zero. We've got a form on the Canny website talking to our CRM. Loads of different things. And what you can do is MailChimp might not talk to Pipedrive organically. So you use Zapier as the bridge between the two and pull them together, mash them together. You can filter things out. You can use HTML and code to make it even better. But how does it help marketers? So within Canny, these are kind of, I broke down a little what we do with Zapier to help our marketing. We serve a lot of content and downloads up through active campaigns. So people download a brief template or download a resource from our website. Out of 100 signups, 
50 might have Gmail, Hotmail, spammy Russian email. They've got different email kind of index things. Of, well, I don't know what the name for them is. After the at, they might be Google Mail, Gmail. They might not be super valuable to canny. But what is valuable is like tony.hardy at realcompany.com. And what we do with Zapier is we get the active campaign zap and connected to a Google Sheet zap. And we strip out any Hotmails, Gmails, or anything that's a bit generic looking and leave us with a list of contacts that are real people at real companies and with what they're downloaded next to them. This lets me rather creepily connect with them on LinkedIn, send out a friendly message, say hi, how can we help? And then that gets a conversation going. So that's one way we use Zapier. We feed our form inquiries directly into Pipedrive. You can do that naturally, but with Zapier, you get a few more little controls and you can make automations just that little bit more crisp. We update the company Slack channel when any sort of key content pieces or pillar pieces of content are posted out. We ask the team to share them. That happens automatically. And then we used to have an automation running that helps us post blogs out automatically. So when the canny blog is posted, send it out to all of the different social media channels. That works quite well too. And then if you're doing paid, Canny don't do much paid advertising at, at all, to be perfectly honest. But if you're doing Facebook ads, Google ads, you can tie a lot of stuff back into Zapier. And it, there's a whole lot of options there. Zapier is well worth checking out. Tool number four is not a piece of software. The one-page marketing plan. This is a book by Alan Dibb. And how is a book a marketing tool? Well, bear with us, I'll tell you. But the book's absolutely outstanding. Definitely get hold of it. I listened to the audio book when I bought the real book. It, it's a short read. And what it helps you do is construct a plan for how to market your business. So you go through three stages. You go through the before the sale, the pre-sale, during the sale, and after the sale. And what, what it does is it gives you a three, the three grid of all of the different things that you need to be considering. So before the sale, you're looking at target market the message you're sending to the target market and the media and the way that you're going to connect to the target. During the sale, you're looking at lead capture systems, your lead nurturing systems, and the sales conversion strategy itself. And then after the sale, how you deliver world-class experience, increase customer lifetime value, and what your referral strategy look like. It's, it's a pretty straightforward tool, but what it does is it forces you to think granular, granular, that word is not coming out. Force you to think about the nine different areas of a marketing strategy, and it really just focuses focuses you, focuses the messages, and makes you think really narrowly about the target that you're going after and how you're going to connect with them. Tool number five is Hotjar. Every one of these slides starts off saying, this is one of my favorite tools. They are all really solid marketing tools. Hotjar's a real interesting one. So they used to have a free plan. I think they still might have a free plan. And what that lets you do is create heat maps. So on your website, you can see where people are clicking, where people are going, what, what people are finding useful and what they aren't. It lets you create scroll maps. So where people are getting to on the website before clicking off and going to other places. So the top of the website will always be red and hot. And as you get down the website, it'll get cooler and cooler. But you can see if there's any areas where people are like, oh, I don't like that, and clicking straight away. It lets you survey customers for feedback. So it kind of puts in a little non-intrusive pop-up, lets you get a bit of real-time feedback from website visitors. And it lets you record sessions so you can see users using your website in live time, getting to see exactly where people are going. And importantly with Hotjar, if you pay the, the, uh, some plans where you can get access to really specific things like con contact pages, conversion forms, you can see exactly where people are going, where you're losing them or even what they're looking for. It's a really interesting tool because what it lets you do is it, it, it informs better decisions. Like we added some things and removed some things to the Canny website from the Canny website because we've seen in the scroll maps that people were getting lost at that point. So they went, we added some new things in. Let's yeah, uncover hidden opportunities and things that you didn't know people were looking for. And it lets you prioritize the changes. Pretty straightforward. Okay, number six. This is the slide that I've been dreading, the reverse goal engine. This is a really straightforward piece. Like People use this in business all the time but I don't say it used in marketing or by marketing teams anywhere near as much as it should be. 
So the whole idea of the reverse goal engine is you start at the end by defining your goal and your deadline. Okay, we want to generate one lead per day, every day, which is roughly 30 a month. So that's the end. Then you take a step back. Okay, how do we get there? How many people do we need on our site to generate that many leads? Well, we know from previous data that our conversion rate is 5%. So to get 30 people a month, we need to get roughly 600 people on our key conversion page in a month. Back another step. Okay, how are we going to get 600 people on the conversion page? Well, we can do it through great content with strong hold actions, or we can utilize paid advertising, or we can do both. All right, back another step. Let's look at what paid ads history. How much do we need to spend to get them 600 people? Do we have the budget? Or if we're going down the whole great content route, look at our popular posts. How much traffic do they attract on a monthly basis? How many more great pieces of pillar content do we need to create? And then you just keep working back and back until you get to the very tactics. Okay, that type of content works. Those ads work. We're going to do more of that, more of that, less of that. And essentially, you build a backwards map. We've just done this for Canny's intended launch into the USA. We've kind of started with the end goal in mind. Okay, by the end of 2025, here's, here's a little insider secret. By the end of 2025, Canny want to be opening their doors into the USA. This is what it looks like. And then we're working back and we are about to construct the full kind of three and a bit year plan that takes us through to opening our doors in the state. Number seven, this is actually my favorite tool. I have definitely said that every time so far. This is my real favorite tool in the bunch, and it's Google Optimize. Sorry to all our tools out there, but this, this free Google tool lets you do so much and make a real impact on your bottom line. So Google Optimize is part of the Google suite. It goes alongside Analytics Search Console Tag Manager. But Optimize lets you run A-B tests, split tests, multivariate tests on your website. So... I'm loath to say you can test your button color and change it from red to blue because that's the, that's the bottom of the barrel sort of test, but you can test your button color and change it from red to blue and see if more people click it. More importantly though, you can test messaging, you can test layout, you can test different like lockups of different things and say, ah, oh, actually people like that offer to get a free consultation more than they do to get this download the consultation e-pack or whatever it is. You can do loads of testing, and what you can do is link that into your Google Analytics goals. You can link it into your setup there, and you get some real data upon through. If you've got enough people coming to your website, say 10,000, 20,000 in a month, then you can get some really decent data out of that. And what it lets you do is like get your site, your ideas, and your decisions pre-validated before you push them live, and that's massive. Like. If you're working blind and just randomly changing the website for the sake of it, you could be throwing money down the drain. Google Optimize does go a long way to stopping that, and it makes you make decisions with a bit of data behind them in a bit more kind of common business sense. That's the seven tools. It's pretty straightforward. But how do we make your marketing tools better? Well, one, think about not adding more software. More software on top of software on top of software often isn't the answer. You can just end up down a hole with loads of things piling in. It's not always the perfect solution. Number two, think outside of the screen. Lots of things happen in the screen in the world of marketing, but just step outside, go, go to the park, get in the boardroom, pen, paper, whiteboard, work with your team. It can be quicker and it can be a little more agile than you thought. Not everything has to be done through Teams, through Slack, through some form of online collaboration tool. Get outside of the screen, talk to people, and brainstorm together. And three, data drives everything. Use all of the tools at the software at your disposal to drive better decisions. And then it, st it stops you going around the twist. You can end up down a rabbit hole in marketing. But if you've got some real data that backs everything up, that, that's what you want from your marketing tools and software. Normally, we'll have a Q&A. Normally, it takes five to 10 minutes, but we're not live, so we don't have a Q&A. We've got some pre-prepared questions of things that we should just mention very quickly. One, what are the best marketing tools for SEO? SEO is a massive, massive topic. Obviously, we talked about ARFs, RFs, SEMrush, SEMrush. Screaming Frog is another tool that comes up a lot. That, that is mentioned all over the place. I haven't used it a lot myself personally, but it lets you crawl websites and get some real good data out of them. Moz obviously comes up quite a bit too, so check those two tools out. 
Number two, how can I get the most out of my marketing tools? Well, when you're paying £200 a month roughly for ARFs, it's probably worth keeping up to date with the latest features. Subscribe to their YouTube channel. Read the release notes and the change notes as they come out. They keep adding software. Like This is a great thing about software and startup companies that are running SaaS businesses. They're adding and improving software at all times, so keep on track of that. But set up your goals and objectives too and always tie that back to what you're doing within the software itself. Question three, which is the best email marketing tool? I have not touched on email marketing in this episode of the podcast at all. It's so debatable. People have different preferences. Active Campaign's popular, HubSpot's popular, MailChimp's popular, Source ConvertKit. They all do relatively similar things. MailChimp and ConvertKit probably have less in the automations department than Active Campaign. HubSpot's really expensive, but does a whole lot of stuff. It's different strokes for different folks. You're gonna have to have a look yourself and figure out what works for you and your business. Question four, is the marketing funnel dead? The answer I've wrote down is just ha ha ha. Like, yeah, kind of. It's a bit more all over the place than it was. Flywheel, not Flywheel, HubSpot are preaching on about the Flywheel and customers coming in, being loyal, return, return, return. I think there's still a place for the funnel, but it's definitely more abstract than it was before. That's it. This has been an episode of Demand Better Marketing. This is episode three. Remember, subscribe in in the podcast app, subscribe on Spotify and all of the other places. Don't settle for less. Demand better marketing. And we'll see you next time.